He had no home, no job and no possessions, except for a suitcase full of theorems. He wandered from city to city, fueled by coffee and mathematics, leaving behind a trail of brilliant discoveries. Paul Erdos didn't chase money, he didn't chase power, he chased something far more elusive, mathematical truth. This is the story of a man who saw numbers not just as symbols, but as secrets waiting to be unlocked. A man whose mind never rested, and whose genius reshaped mathematics forever. Paul Erdos was born on March 26, 1913, in Budapest, Hungary, into a world on the brink of war. But the only battles he cared about were the ones between prime numbers. By the age of three, he could tell you how many seconds someone had been alive, without using a pen or paper. By four, he had discovered negative numbers on his own. Numbers weren't just a subject to study, they were his friends. But Erdos's world was small. His mother, Luba, had already lost two children to disease, and she wasn't about to lose another. She kept Paul indoors, away from other kids, away from distractions, and, most importantly, away from anything that wasn't mathematics. His father, also a mathematician, was captured in World War I and spent years in a Russian prison camp. So Erdos grew up surrounded only by equations and books his only playmates, the numbers he manipulated in his mind. By the time he was a teenager, Erdos had already begun making his mark. One of his first great insights, prime numbers, those indivisible, mysterious building blocks of mathematics. He didn't just study them, he saw patterns hidden within them that others had missed. At just 18 years old, he found a beautiful, elegant way to prove something that had puzzled mathematicians for decades, Chebyshev's theorem. The theorem states that there is always at least one prime number. Between any number n and its double, 2n. Sounds simple, right? But proving it, that was the hard part. Many had tried. But Erdos, using his brilliant combinatorial mind, found a proof so elegant and simple that even seasoned mathematicians were left in awe. Erdos had outgrown Hungary. He wasn't just good at math, he was math, and he knew that to truly make his mark, he had to leave. With nothing but a suitcase and a head full of equations, he set off on a journey that would take him across continents, through thousands of notebooks, and into the minds of over 500 collaborators. What came next was a life like no other. But Erdos wasn't just about numbers, he was about people, connecting minds, solving problems, and rewriting the very nature of collaboration. And so began the nomadic life of a man who never stopped thinking, never stopped proving, and never, ever settled down. Paul Erdos didn't own a house. He didn't own a car. He didn't even have a permanent office. What he did have was a suitcase, a passport, and an unstoppable need to solve problems. From Budapest to Princeton, from Israel to Moscow, Erdos travelled across the world like a mathematical nomad, appearing at the doorsteps of fellow mathematicians with one simple phrase, my brain is open. And when Erdos's brain was open, mathematics itself changed. Erdos didn't care about material possessions. He gave away most of his prize money, funded scholarships for young mathematicians, and lived off the generosity of his colleagues. If you had a couch, he'd sleep on it. If you had a problem to solve, he'd help crack it. And if you weren't working fast enough, he'd call you lazy and pour you a cup of coffee himself. But working with Erdos came with a price. He didn't believe in sleep. It was just wasted time. Fueled by coffee and amphetamines, he would work for 20 hours straight, solving equations at a speed few could keep up with. He had his own quirky language, too. Children were epsilons. Money was dead fish. And women? He called them bosses. And as for God, Erdos wasn't a believer. He jokingly referred to God as the supreme fascist, the one who made life unfair by keeping the best mathematical proofs locked away, only revealing them to the lucky few. One of Erdos's most groundbreaking contributions came in the form of Ramsey theory, the idea that no matter how chaotic things seem, some hidden structure must always emerge. Imagine taking a room full of people, if you pick six of them at random, no matter what, you'll always find either three who all know each other 
or three who are total strangers. This mind-blowing principle extends into everything – networks, computer science, even the Internet. Erdos and his collaborators laid the foundations for extremal graph theory, giving birth to some of the most important principles in modern mathematics. But Erdos didn't just want to solve problems, he wanted to solve them together. Mathematics had always been a solitary field where lone geniuses worked in isolation. Erdos changed that. He collaborated with over 500 mathematicians, more than anyone in history, proving that ideas grow stronger when shared. To Erdos, mathematics wasn't a competition. It was a global conversation, one proof at a time. Erdos may have never had a home, but he built something far greater, a mathematical empire connected by a simple idea, sharing knowledge. And his impact didn't end when he left this world. In fact, that's where one of his greatest legacies begins, the Erdos number. Most people slow down as they get older. Paul Erdos, he did the opposite. He published over 1,500 papers, a record-breaking number, and continued traveling and proving theorems well into his 80s. Mathematics wasn't just his passion, it was his oxygen. He simply couldn't stop. But Erdos's greatest legacy wasn't just the problems he solved, it was the way he connected people. His collaborations became so legendary that mathematicians started tracking what became known as the Erdos number. If you wrote a paper with Erdos, your Erdos number was one. If you wrote a paper with someone who had worked with Erdos, your number was two. The lower your Erdos number, the closer you were to mathematical greatness. The impact of Erdos's work didn't stop at pure math. His discoveries in graph theory and combinatorics laid the groundwork for computer science, network theory and even modern internet algorithms. The very structure of social networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, even Google's search engine, owes something to Erdos's mathematical ideas. And his influence went beyond academia. Just like the Erdos number, Hollywood actors started tracking their Bacon number based on how closely they were connected to Kevin Bacon in films. Erdos had accidentally made mathematics cool. Erdos believed that mathematics wasn't just something humans invented. It was something deeper, something eternal. He spoke of a mystical place called The Book, where God, whom he called the Supreme Fascist, kept the most perfect, most elegant proofs for every mathematical truth. Erdos spent his life searching for glimpses of these perfect proofs, knowing he'd never see them all, but that didn't stop him from trying. On September 20th, 1996, Erdos attended yet another math conference. He did what he always did, worked on problems, shared ideas and chased numbers, and then just like that, he was gone. But Erdos didn't really die, because the ideas he left behind, the problems he posed, and the collaborations he inspired, they're still alive today. His Erdos number continues to connect mathematicians across the world. His theorems continue to shape modern science. And somewhere in some notebook, a young mathematician is still searching for the perfect proof. Maybe even one from the book. Paul Erdos never stopped moving, never stopped thinking, never stopped proving. And as long as there are problems to solve and minds willing to collaborate the spirit of Erdos, his number, his legacy, will never truly disappear. Because in mathematics, just like in life, the journey never really ends. <laughs>